So recently, I made a program that converts MIDI files into $30 website songs, and although the MIDI loader was broken, the converter worked just fine. Unfortunately, most people were not able to reach that point. Today, I'd like to explain how the converter works. To understand how it works, let's take a look at both file formats involved. A MIDI file is a music file format. Unlike an MP3, which stores an audio recording, a MIDI file stores instructions on how a piece of music should be played, including what notes to play, what instruments to play them on, and how to play them. Think of it this way. A MIDI file is to an MP3 file what sheet music is to an audio recording. They look very different, and they set out to achieve different goals. A $30 website song is similar to a MIDI file in some ways. The interface of the website is actually very telling of the underlying file format. A $30 website file is simply a list of sounds and actions. Whereas the information inside MIDI files is intended to be very general and to be useful in a wide range of different use cases, $30 website songs are very simple and can only be interpreted by the $30 website. The formats seem similar enough, so how do we convert them? Let's dig a little deeper into the formats to see how they work. A MIDI file is divided into tracks. Each track usually corresponds to a single instrument, though the specific instrument can change at any time. It's just limited to one at a time. In terms of data, each track has a list of MIDI events. An event can be anything, such as a note beginning to sound, a note stopping, a tempo change, an instrument change, among many other things. Each event has an associated delta time, which is the amount of time in MIDI ticks that has passed since the event before it. Simultaneous events will have delta times of zero, for instance. How long a tick is can vary between MIDI files. Although keeping track of events by the absolute time at which they occur would be more intuitive in my opinion, the MIDI engineers probably had their reasons for doing it this way. Let me know in the comments if you have some insights regarding this decision. A $30 website song, on the other hand, is a single list of $30 website actions and sounds, which I will refer to as events as well. Each event has a small amount of information associated with it. For sounds, this information is the pitch at which the sound should be played. For actions like tempo and volume, it's a value along with how that value is applied, whether it's added, multiplied, or overwrites the current value. Other actions, such as stop all sounds, have no information associated with them. Unlike with MIDI events, timing information is not encoded in $30 website events. Instead, the timing of sounds is implicit. The tempo action is used to calculate the interval between sounds, the combine action forces sounds to play simultaneously, and the target and loop actions cause playback to jump to different points in the song. Now that we know the specifics of the two formats, we can identify three problems which need to be solved. One, how do we convert MIDI events to $30 website events? Two, how do we mix multiple MIDI tracks down to one track? And three, how do we convert from MIDI's explicit timing to the $30 website's implicit timing? My solution to the first problem is simple. Each instrument in a track is mapped to a single $30 website sound. This is where user customization comes into play. This means that the same instrument in different tracks can still use different $30 website sounds, which I think is better than mapping every instance of an instrument to one sound. The solution to the second problem is a bit more involved. The first obstacle in mixing multiple MIDI tracks down to one is that MIDI tracks are independent of one another in their timing. My approach was this. First, I converted the timings of all MIDI events from delta time to absolute time, using the tempo information in the file. Next, I discarded all events except note on events. At this point in the process, I paired each note on event with information specifying which $30 website sound it should play and at what pitch. Then, I combined all of the tracks together and sorted the events by their absolute time. Now, I essentially have a timeline of $30 website sounds. The solution to the third problem is the most involved. We now need to convert from absolute time rather than delta time as a result of the mixing process we did. I'll walk you through my process of coming to the solution. A naive approach would be to emulate how MIDI works. That is, choose a tick length and convert the sound timings to that. Then, put down a tempo action in the $30 website which will make one beat equal to one tick. Next, split the timeline into discrete ticks. Finally, map each tick in the song to either a sound or a silence in the $30 website. This works, but at the expense of a larger file size and more sounds, the smaller your tick length is. There's an upper limit to the tempo in the $30 website, and thus a limit to how short your tick length can be. How can we fix this? 
Let's first ask ourselves a question. Can certain parts of the song get away with a larger tick length and thus smaller tempo? It would be at the expense of complexity and readability, but it would reduce size. The answer is yes. So now, we need an algorithm that can split the song into sections of notes, all with the same interval between them. What is this algorithm? Run Length Encoding, or RLE. It's normally used for compressing data, which, what do you know, is kind of similar to what we want to do. RLE works by replacing runs of data, or sequences of a repeated value, with an indication of what is being repeated and how many times. In many cases, this representation is smaller than the runs themselves, and thus, compression has been achieved. Unfortunately for data compression, this representation can be bigger than runs that are very short, such as runs that only last for one value. As we will see, however, this does not matter to us. In fact, we need to keep this behavior. Let's see why. Let's apply the principles of RLE to our song. What are the values in our data? In this case, it's the times and ticks between the nodes. We are going to make two changes to RLE before we continue. First, discard the lengths of the runs. Second, rather than replacing the runs with the run indicators, simply insert the run indicators as they are currently. What does this do for us? Let's observe. Let's look at this data. It's a list of $30 website sounds interspersed with interval lengths, the intervals and ticks between all the notes that follow. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's convert these ticks to seconds based on the tempo information in the MIDI file. Next, let's do some basic math to convert those second intervals to tempos, and convert those to tempo actions. Is it starting to come together now? Those undefined tempos are a result of having zero second intervals. Let's convert them to combined actions. Only one step remains. We need to remove redundant tempo actions. If you ignore the combines, some runs go on for longer than the values would lead on. Let's address that. Perhaps now it's apparent. We've just eliminated all pauses entirely. Only tempo and combine actions are required to represent any sequence, and run length encoding makes determining which ones efficient and elegant.